So I painted this brass chest plate for this guy a while ago, and while it looks okay, we're not here for okay, we're here for fantastically average. So let's fix it. Now while this guy may look okay from across the room in dim lighting, if you squint, I think we can do a lot better. So the best way to do this is with the patent pending brush boop. Now if you take nothing else from this video, I want you to understand that if you mess something up, it is fixable. Paint is not permanent. Everything is fixable. So with that being said, we're going to start in with our highlight color. Uh, that I did not show on camera, so I'll, I'll put it on the screen, right there. There you go. Now with my poor little webcam's resolution pushed to max, zoomed in, I want you to notice that I leave a dark spot in the middle of where my two highlights will be placed. It's very important to plan out this sort of contrast when doing NMM. Now I'm not going to edit any of this out, I'm just going to speed it up because I want you to see where and how I place my highlights. Keeping in mind that my light source is from the right side. Now we're going to make a glaze out of that same paint that we just used. We want it to be thin enough to still apply a little pigment, but and not thick enough to completely cover the shadows that we left. Notice how I pull from the shadows to the highlights. We want to soften that transition, not get rid of the shadow. Now using another color that I forgot to show on screen, we will apply our second round of highlights. Just as a side note, I am considering starting an Etsy store with some of these painted miniatures that I have no use for, like this guy. I'm only painting him because he looks cool, and therefore do not need him, so when he is done, uh, I will probably sell him. If that is something you're interested in keep an eye out. I will be posting the links and it will definitely first and foremost go to a better camera so you can see what I'm doing. Now, with a color that I definitely put on screen and you just were not paying attention, we're going to start in with our third round of highlights. These are very important. This is where we start to define and get a little bit of that metallic look. We want to go in very small areas and pay attention to where the light is coming from. From time to time, make a scratch mark, like right there, that falls into your shadow area. 
It'll help sell the metal effect if it has a few scrapes and dings that light would naturally catch. Now I'm specifically not speeding up this highlight process because it's important for you to see that the video is longer for the YouTube algorithm. Big brain place. Now we're going to make a glaze out of that last paint that we used and we are going to glaze from the mid-tones to the highlights, not the shadows to the highlights. That's a very important distinction. Hey, guess what I forgot to do? Yeah, I, I didn't show the, the paint bottle on screen, but I did find a super cute picture of a mouse. So, you guys, you really, you, I mean, it's, it's better, right? As far as the process goes for this one, it's basically rinse and repeat for the last few highlight steps. Uh, we are getting into the shiny surface of the metal now. You can start to see it kind of transform into a metallic looking object. Uh, we just want to do very, very small and controlled highlights now. All right, and just like with the last highlights, we're gonna create a glaze with that color, and we're going to glaze in only from our last highlight to that highlight. We want to keep this out of the shadows as much as possible, otherwise our results will start to look chalky. Now we've moved on to pure white highlights. I did forget to show the paint bottle used, uh, but I did find a picture of an adorable little puppy. Now with this pure white, we are making the absolute shiniest point on the metal, the sheen. So this will not go everywhere. And we want to do just little scratches and dots. We don't want to do layering type highlights like we have with the last few. We just want that little pinpoint spot where the light is the sharpest reflection off of the metal. Now we want to up the contrast on our armor a little bit. So what we're going to do is take a red brown and reduce that into a glaze and glaze from the mid-tones into the shadows to deepen those shadows a little bit.
now I'm going to do something that often gets overlooked. I'm going to flip this guy upside down so that I'm now looking at where my deepest shadows would be and I'm going to reinforce those with pure black. I find that while doing this NMM especially, you're pushing around a lot of pigments and you're doing a lot of blending and so your deepest shadows can get lost in translation. And if you reinforce those, it does really help to make the metallic nature pop because it ups the contrast significantly. Now at this point, I wanted to grab one of my lighter midtones and come back in and reinforce some of this area on the chest and shoulder. Uh, it got a little bit too dark for my liking, so I wanted to come in and just reinforce it just a little bit to bring back some more of that shine. So once you're done spit shining the armor, all that's left to do is paint the little swirly things on his chest black. And that's your brass armor. I hope you guys liked the video. Smash a comment, leave a subscribe, and turn the like button red. I'll see you guys in the next one.